Get your stinking rat out. It's late night large. Welcome to the show. So exhaustive. It sets off the carbon monoxide alarm. Late night large. Blowing smoke up your ass is me, Aaron Bliss, while lighting his own farts on fire is Mike Large. Don't knock it till you tried it. <laughs> oh, I won't. Welcome to another happy edition of Lockdown Large, people. Helping you through the COVID period uh, until at least the pandemic is over and we return to some semblance of normality in our creeping authoritarian state. So, this week, what have we had? Uh, this particular week, we're recording on the first day of the new loosening of restrictions. So, we, we are finally allowed to go to pubs, outdoors, restaurants outdoors, get our hairs cut. Uh, I'm sure Mike will remind me of other stuff. Meet up with more people out, out of doors. Uh, anything else, Mike, I've missed that the new freedoms that were allowed? Uh, go back to the gym. Uh, right, like yeah. That. But you, you've covered you've covered the main ones. Um, chiefly the... <laughs> the the bio. Uh, so yeah, finally, finally, I'll get this out of the way. Finally, I've had my fucking mop chopped. <laughs> now, that, that has needed that has needed to happen for a while now. I, you've been watching these videos, I'm sure. Um, you know, all the blokes have been looking and thinking, "Is hair's getting long?" All the girls have been looking and thinking, I'm trying to fucking get myself off to this, and his hair's getting longer and longer and longer. Um, but yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually still I could still pull it off. I look great. Um, Wait, whatever, can you, really. Can, but, can you stop? Putting pull it off into every other sentence you say, please, because I know that's deliberate. Oh, you... Yeah, yeah, I know it's deliberate. You know it's deliberate, and everyone else knows it's deliberate. Uh, all right, but I refuse to change. What, what? Okay, what was the experience like, Mike? Give us a quick rundown. What was the experience of like going back into the barbers? Take us through it quickly. Well, do you know what? Actually, to be fair, um, but the barbers I go to, um, really fucking great guys. Really great guys in there. Um, you know, really organised as well. On top of things with regards to, you know, the regulations. Uh, the council actually turned up while I was there and did a spot check on them. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, I, obviously today as well, they were going to be all over it, weren't they? All over like a rash. Every restaurant, every bar. Every... As far as they mean to go on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They want to make sure that, people aren't taking the piss where they can because let's be honest it will be happening but they want to be seen to be doing their bit to uh to kind of prevent it it's kind um, of put, putting the thought into their heads isn't it like the if people are around checking you think well maybe some people are going to be arseholes take a look and think oh no i better bang myself so just not worth taking the risk yeah is what is what you i think that's the idea that they'll hope that they'll put into most people's heads and like i say they, they, they came around actually while i was there was it was um it was fine just you know it came around oh have you got this that and the other if you see your ppe it's where it needs to be if you got your qr code up uh, there's a thing there's a sort of requirement they have to display them um all that sort of is there anything we can do to help is it you know no brilliant all good yeah we can see everything's fantastic here you Appointment only, are you doing booking? So, yeah, limit the amount of people so there's not people waiting. Distancing was all there, etc. Um, say, you know, turn up a maximum five minutes before or whatever. So you've got one person potentially waiting per, um, yeah, yeah. per person, you know. Uh, you know, and, and they organise it really well. They've been on top. Of, I mean, they've had enough time to do it, probably. Um, I think True. for the last few months, um, not doing a lot out. I don't know. What they've been doing in their lives, but um, yeah, but yeah, so uh, yeah, really good, really good, and it just felt it felt nice to be doing something normal again. So, look, a bit, a bit like when I went and played golf the previous weekend, you know, spoke about it. Um, it's nice, to, well, to kind of be outside doing something as well. Obviously, you can still do go for walks and things like that, but. 
um, you know, to be able to meet up with another person and do do something like that, back to, to normality, if you like. And what's more normal than going to get your hair cut? So, you know, but I know we've been here before, you know, a lockdown one finished and then you can get your hair cut and then a second lockdown finished and then you can get your hair cut. And, but, you yeah. know, this hopefully is the kind of the end of it. And I think my hair was probably longer this time <laughs> than it got on the previous one. So it's doing my fucking head in, to be honest with you guys. <laughs> Literally. Um, you know, it pisses me off. And, hey, it goes over your ears. But it's not, it doesn't come all the way over your ears. Like, it isn't like down to my shoulders or whatever. I could rock that as well. But, um, you know, just annoying length. You lie down and you've got the hair going in your ear and shit. No, nah. not for me. Not for me. Yeah, I, well, I mean, uh, fair play. I mean, you know, I, coming from someone who doesn't really understand the concept of a barber, I'm sure it was good, Mike. And and obviously the big, the big thing is um, it, we're social creatures, aren't we? So... When you say back to normality, I, I, I kind of sneer at that whole normality thing. But it's just being social, you know. It's being around, being around people, just having a having a chat about nothing and nothing in particular. Just yeah. maybe not enjoying, but kind of being intrigued by other people's company and uh, just kind of yeah, this is nice. And then obviously, no, like, I think most people do enjoy other people's company. You don't know what um, I mean is you don't enjoy every person's company. That's what I meant to say. Like you know, if you, I didn't enjoy their company. I wouldn't go there. Oh, fair play. Okay. Uh, like I say, I, who am I to speak? I I obviously don't know what a barber is, um, so I don't see it as something that I need to go to for a social custom or anything practical. But I'm sure a lot of people do do that. The same the same way that that women I don't know maybe men do it as well, but women can go to nail bars and salons. I'm sure that's very similar. It's a social yeah, thing. To... Yeah, yeah. It, it's it's like it, it's it's silly, isn't it? We pretend it, it's like a pretext. Oh, I'm getting my nails done because I really need them done. No, you don't. You want them done, but you kind of want the experience. You want you want to just be social, catch up. Is there any gossip, etc.? And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what human beings do. So enjoy it, people. Savor this. Savor this new liberty. Uh, I can't say I've enjoyed any liberty, but then you know I've. I, we've already discussed this. I'm a, I'm a natural introvert. As long as I can see the people that are special to me now and again, that's good enough for me. Don't get me wrong. I do miss nightclubs. Uh, I miss you know potentially the opportunity to attend parties. Not that you know when you get a bit older you don't get quite so many invites, but. Uh, I tell you, did I tell you um did I tell you what I've been into at the moment, Mike? I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but seeing as we're talking about what we've personally been up to, so for a while I've been kind of getting interested. And when you say getting interested, you know, uh, if you get interested in any hobby, I I think it's probably natural that what happens is you see a practitioner of that hobby be very good at it, and you think I want some of that. That looks fun, or I'd like to be like that. That's kind of how you get into it, isn't it? You don't. You don't just. Most of the time, you don't just randomly like pick something and go. Mm, might as well try that. It's like you see someone either in public or on TV or whatever, and think, "Oh, they look. That looks fucking fun," or, or "They look really good at that." I'd. I'd like to get to that level. So I've been kind of working on on pixel art for a little while now, and it's it's very deep because obviously it's there's a huge difference between trying pixel art and actually being a good at it um, because it takes a long time and a lot of detail to make to to go from a very basic picture to something that's actually very nice to look at and and of course as we know as human beings it's it's very difficult sometimes to understand how we as in the individual takes on information and applies it effectively so that's what I was kind of doing I was kind of throwing shit at the wall for a while oh that looks a little bit better that looks a bit better mm, I'm still nowhere near where I want to be though anyway this all finally the penny dropped and it all became clear to me when as I can't remember if I mentioned before I decided oh why don't I um why don't I because basically I've been doing these uh, Iron Maiden jigsaw puzzles <laughs> that's, how, that's that's the, the life of a rock star that right there and um I just completed one and I, I took a look at the box and I thought, hey, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I could just like 
sort of emulate the artwork on the box, but in pixel art form. Because then rather than coming up with things in my head, you know, you, you're, you're not copying, but you're emulating something in front of you. So I thought, oh, this would be easier. Anyway, sort of seven or eight days, absolutely nose to the wheel later, including almost all the bank holiday weekend, I'd, I'd produced this, um, this artwork. And I was really pleased with it. And it was really good quality. And I was like, oh, my God, this is it. This is how I'm going to get better. So I've been working on my second piece, which is almost done as well. So the idea is, yeah, I'm just going to work through, um, at the moment, just Iron Maiden pieces, trying to come up okay. with a few of them. Well, I, I, saw the, I saw the start that you made on the first piece. I've also seen the finished product. Mm -hmm. um, Aaron will... Uh, He'll post it in the comments, by the way, guys, if you're intrigued. Have a look. We'll get to do I'm not that. sure it's possible to do that, but... You'll find a way, boy. You'll find a way. I, I've, I've said now, don't make a liar of me. <laughs> I've made a promise. So, yeah, it, he'll find a way to share that with, with you all. I'm sure you're intrigued. It is, it is good, in fairness to him, as much as I love to rip oh, it. Um... It is good. So, you know, and if you've enjoyed doing it, fucking great. Bonus. It's win-win, yeah. I'd advise anyone, you know, if you, if you see something that you think, oh, yeah, I'd, I'd really like to try that. Don't just do not give up too easily. Everyone is shit at something when they first try it. I'm sure Lionel Messi wasn't amazing at football the first time he kicked one. So <laughs> everyone has to start from a very low base. The key is, like I say, the key is finding that pathway, that bridge between being very ropey at something and building up your skill level to closer to where you want to be. So keep at it, people. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> the personal stuff over. What's been happening in the wider COVID situation uh, this last week, Mike? So we've got Obviously, as we discussed, we've we've got our new liberties, which we've we've said how it affects us. I saw. I mean, I should also mention other things because um, obviously, with my particular job, uh, people are allowed to undertake flight instruction as as well, and and obviously driving instruction. So those kind of things can happen again, which, you know, is very important to some people, particularly driving. I mean, that you know, that's some people's literal freedom to be able to go to a job or visit people hangs in the balance there so that's great that that's allowed so we've got the loosening of restrictions obviously the big question which we'll discuss in the following weeks is how is this going to affect the r rate are we going to make sure we stave off going back to a situation where we're looking at hospitals and thinking oh shit they're uh, we're going down the wrong path here fingers crossed we're not going to get to that stage so, Mike, I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the numbers. Well, I was looking at the numbers for the last. I guess in from the weekend, daily deaths looking pretty decent, as in you know we're we're only in double figures and very low double figures. Um, the hospital admissions is down from last week. Sadly, the cases are up. By nearly a thousand but I mean you, you say how likely is it that you're gonna have the caseloads continuing to fall when people are now mixing and mingling more often so let's just hope that that does not go rapidly up and just goes up in a manageable level and you know the, the vaccine does its work in making sure the majority of those people are not hospitalized uh, the vaccine program is still going uh, really well as far as i can see around about half the population has had at least one dose so that's still going really well well done nhs clap for them <laughs> like literal clap not a government ordered clap but you know fair play the nhs is um is putting uh, playing a blinder there well not the clap that aaron dishes out oh that, that's your clap you're talking about mike <laughs> that's <laughs> That's one virus you don't mind uh, the rate uh, increasing exponentially. <laughs> Mike, I don't know if we touched upon this last week, and I don't know whether it is worth touching on because 
it's like opening the cupboard and then you know the little the freaky little gremlins come out that you've kept locked up there but did you see that story about the blood clotting with the AstraZeneca vaccine the only reason I mentioned this is not to be irresponsible it's just to acknowledge that it was in the news but before I let you comment I'm just going to make it very clear so the blood clotting thing that again I think the conspiracy theories are jumping on again the blood clotting thing is only an issue apparently and it is an issue it has been confirmed by the WHO that it is an issue for the AstraZeneca Oxford vaccine but and a big but the odds of a blood clot forming from that vaccine are so incredibly low i mean if you applied them to almost any other scenario it, it wouldn't be worth thinking about you know the, it's not worth comparing it but the odds are incredibly low out of all the people who've received this vaccine it is a fraction of one percent a fraction of a fraction of one percent that have been affected by blood clots and even then i think seven people are on record as having died as a result of these blood clots and if you look at the numbers again fraction of fraction of fraction of fraction of one percent so it's it's almost a non-existent problem the only reason the who refer to it is because of course that's how the scientific community works if there is a if there is some kind of a pattern emerging even if it's a tiny negligible pattern you know they need to try and iron it out because we don't want any patterns for negative side effects if we can avoid them what they i think that they advised is that younger people and they're describing that as people under the age of 30 not be given the oxford vaccine at the moment now presumably that means because uh when you the older you get i'm guessing your blood gets a bit thinner and there's slightly less risk of so anyway unless you are under 30 it's not even worth thinking about i don't know if you have any comment on it mike um yeah i mean I, I, what you don't want to do you have to be careful about doing these things is paying too much credence to them and then you end up scaremongering and even if your message is a more positive one the fact that you mention it you know, you're giving it airtime but um yeah you know it, it's been out there it's a thing um I, I, I don't know how it compares in comparison to normal day-to-day uh, -day things that we do it, with regards to risk so percentage-wise what what are the chances that you're gonna um you know is, is getting in a car any safer is getting on a plane any safer with all these things um, I don't know how it compares, but yeah, I think the important thing is if it was a genuinely big risk, I, I, they wouldn't they wouldn't be dishing it out. Yeah, and, you know, you you get the cynics, won't you? That would go, wow, well, oh, they don't care. They, just, they wouldn't. They wouldn't be doing it. So, mm. by the way. Um... I saw there's a brilliant video there, there is an absolutely exceptional video that I would advise anyone to watch um, this guy that I subscribe to on YouTube which obviously is the platform we're on uh, if you if you check out a guy Thought Slime his name is so the channel is called Thought Slime and he's made a brilliant video about Covid conspiracy theories and he's had to be very careful because obviously YouTube, apparently the algorithm polices videos that mention like COVID or conspiracy theories in any way to avoid misinformation being spread. But his is a satirical video. So he basically completely deconstructs all the arguments, you know, of conspiracy theories in a very sarcastic and facetious way. It is really entertaining and very, very smart the way that he comprehensively analyzes and deconstructs all the bullshit arguments uh, that this is somehow a massive conspiracy theory uh, i don't think actually i don't think it's exclusively covid it's it's more related to this whole replacement theory but it all plays into the covid conspiratorial shit so anyway yeah there's my plug brilliant so okay. yeah basically you know if you're if you're young 
and I presume fit and healthy. I guess they wouldn't give it to people that had more, the, the more likely to get that sort of thing. So I guess if you're young, fit and healthy, you know, and you get given, you've got nothing to worry about. Not at all, because if you're young, fit and healthy, you won't have even been offered it yet. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. You have, yeah, you're already healthy. Offered. They want to. They want to give you that vaccine. You're fine. Don't fucking worry about it. Um, and if you're old and or decrepit like we are, then <laughs> you know. Thanks for taking the bullet for us. Um, and we won't get a blood clot. Ha. Um, but let's move on. Let's move on. Yeah. Th- yeah. Good work there, Mike. Uh, so uh, uh, there a couple of other. I guess big events um, that we were very careful to make sure they did have uh, some kind of relevance to COVID and the lockdown because uh, you know this isn't just a sounding off thing about what's going on we, we try and relate everything to COVID and the lockdown to knit it all together give you a relatively good broad overview of things so I my going. yeah well the first thing I'm going to talk about is <laughs> Uh, it's difficult to believe this Puffin was our Prime Minister, but um, so David Cameron, the pig bother himself, has been in hot has been in hot water, very hot water over the last month or so, and a lot of people who maybe even watch watch us will look at that and go, don't really care, you know, cor- corrupt, uh, you know, corrupt MP, corrupt former Prime Minister, is that a big story? The reason this is a big story and why it has to relate to COVID and particularly us is this. So basically, David Cameron, as we know, used to be the PM, fucked everything up, fucked off like a coward, um, decided to just concentrate on doing what his dad did, which is just shoveling as much money into his account as possible and evading tax. So what he has done since leaving Parliament, amongst the things he's done, uh, he started doing lobbying work for a company called uh, Greenzill, uh, who I believe is related to this dodgy guy called Lex Greensill. Um, and effectively, cut a long story short, they were looking to get their foot in the door for a COVID loan scheme. Now, this is as corrupt as it sounds, right? because COVID loans should just be issued by the government. There's no reason for anybody to get involved. The government can issue these loans and they can put, they can stipulate whatever conditions they like, because ultimately the government can issue its own bonds. It doesn't, you know, it it doesn't pay interest at the same rates as businesses and these kind of things. The government can set pretty much all the rules. There is no reason for a middleman or an intermediary You know, if Rishi Sunak decides it, COVID loans, the government can immediately, the Treasury can issue them directly to businesses or individuals, whatever, and say, these are the conditions you need to pay it back, blah, 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 blah. Now, what David Cameron did was, um, by the way, what makes this more interesting is uh, he described lobbying as the next big scandal when he was in office as prime minister. And of course, he then becomes a corporate lobbyist. taking advantage of the loopholes that he didn't close when he was prime minister so you can see the old boys network working here so he's working for this guy lex greensill on behalf of this company and they say david we 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 want a piece of this uh this state loan thing see if you can get our foot in the door now records show that i think cameron had a lot of contact with ministers and whatever and we know why they employed Cameron as a lobbyist. It's not because he's an exceptional character or he's a particularly qualified lobbyist. It's because of all the contacts he has in government. That's why you employ ex-ministers. So he's been speaking to his mates. Um, that a couple of the incidents are quite kind of piss you off a little bit, like him personally texting the uh, Chancellor of the Exchequer like trying to put pressure on him to agree to it and the chancellor basically saying i'll do whatever i can to to try and make this happen he also apparently had a you won't be surprised i, I think his company or whatever had a series of dinners with i believe with matt hancock uh who we know is one of the most corrupt ministers around at the moment and nobody's got any love for matt hancock so that was happening as well why does this affect us as in the people who are watching this video well we're the taxpayer 
this is our money. So what Cameron was effectively doing was using his influence and his contacts in government to try and say to the government, instead of the government issuing loans, i.e. the taxpayer money going directly where it's needed and then being paid back under stipulations from the government, why don't we get my company that I'm lobbying on behalf of to make those loans instead? So then presumably either the government will pay them a fee for doing it or that company will put conditions on it to basically get money from the people getting the loans that they shouldn't otherwise have been entitled to. It's just really fucking crooked. And the bottom line is, and this is the worst part, uh, and this hasn't been totally confirmed. This is the moment. This is just speculation. But the speculation is that David Cameron personally, if this had happened, Cameron would have made tens of millions of pounds personally from this deal. So, and, and as, as somebody mentioned as well, the fact that our ex-prime minister, so, so this isn't just any crook. We're not talking about someone like Robert Jenrick here. We're talking about someone who used to serve the highest office in the land. You might laugh at that, liars, cheats, whatever. For a certain class of people, being the leader of the country, the prime minister, it is something, an, a real honour, a public service honour. It's something to not take lightly and it's prestigious, whatever. The fact that David Cameron, who was prime minister for nearly six years, I think, the fact that he, in the middle of a global pandemic and a national pandemic that had killed, what, we're guessing coming up to 150,000 people, he thought that was the best time to go in hard to make himself tens of millions of pounds of taxpayer money. It says everything about his character, doesn't it? Or am I missing something here, Mike? Um, no. I think that, um, I mean, you don't know what conversations were had behind closed doors. You don't know how how much it may or may not have been his idea or how much he got lent on. You know, you know, he, he works for someone now. Do you know what I mean? Ultimately. Mm -hmm. So. Well, they didn't employ him to make the tea, did they? <laughs> no, no. And, you know, you know, perhaps he got himself... And you can blame him for that if you want into a situation whereby, you know, someone's putting pressure on him. And, you know, and I don't, I'm not trying to, I don't, I'm not saying for one second he's sympathetic towards him. Um, but, you know, maybe it's, maybe he knows how it looks. He, you know, there's a lot of things. Is he an idiot? No, he's not stupid. Um, but it, it doesn't look good, does it? it it's just, makes him look like every other crooked opportunist that's that's using you know the the terrible situation that we that we are and have been in for personal gain now I'm, I'm not suggesting that you know on some level that's that you know that's entirely something to be to be ashamed of or embarrassed of, you know, someone goes into business, you know, and starts themselves a little mask making business and, and does, you know, are you going to, you're going to rip them to pieces? You're using the pandemic to, no, no I was, you're not. yeah, I, I was going to say, Mike, you, I see the point you're making it, it what, yeah, it, 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 we should distinguish if camera, no matter how much I, completely dislike every element of Cameron's character if he was lobbying on behalf of a company that actually manufactured PPE for instance and he was saying no no you've got to give the contract to us because you know we're, we're going to get it to you so quickly and it's great stuff and it turned out that it was what can I say you know okay of course he's going to pocket a fuckload of money um, because that's what people like him understand it's the only thing they understand but you can understand that and it's, you know, it's murky, but it's not as completely devoid of morals. You know, th there would be a very good reason. The problem here is that he is trying to force a situation that doesn't need to exist. 
right? You know, the, the COVID loan thing, that, that's just crooked. That's not a service that we need. It's a service that they're trying to bribe ministers into creating for the purpose of funneling our tax money to them. So that's the big problem I have. Yeah. I'd love to disagree. <laughs> but it also, doesn't. By the way, good. sorry, another point you just made there, um, I thought was quite interesting, Mike, because actually I can't remember exactly what you said, but you put the thought in my head. If we remember, uh, I'm going to bring up the pig situation. So the, the pig bothering situation. Now, what that illustrates, though, was a key element. <laughs> Try not to mentally picture it. But <laughs> Mike's done worse on a night out. Um, but <laughs> no, I mean, when I heard when I heard of that, I mean, I mean, first of all, when I heard of that story, I just rolled my eyes and I was like, yeah, it makes sense. But the thing that that illustrates about Cameron is his desperation to be accepted and and how how strongly influenced he was by his peers and people putting pressure on him do you know what i mean so that links in with what you were saying where i mean okay he has to be slightly crooked to become a lobbyist because to become a lobbyist you pretty much know that what you're doing is trying to get tax money into this company so I'm not accepting that you go into it with your hands clean and go, oh, well, you know, we're just going to be a very well run business. But at the same time, I can see what you're saying, that maybe he went above and beyond and completely crossed the ethical line entirely because he's too eager to please people. And when he's put under pressure, he'll always default to, oh, I can't let them down. And, and so he does things maybe he otherwise wouldn't have considered. You know, he crosses that event horizon, so, so to speak. I don't know. But Either way, dodgy bastard. Yeah, no wonder uh, Dennis Skinner called him Dodgy Dave. So, yeah, he's kind of disgraced himself there. And the only other big thing uh, I thought we'd touch on, Mike, and <laughs> first of all, be grateful that we weren't one of the well, hopefully a lot of YouTubers weren't like this, but be grateful you're not watching ITV or the BBC or most other channels uh, over the weekend who had seen to have 24 hour programming uh, only showing tribute to the late Prince Philip on a repeat over and over again. Uh, I find it interesting that apparently I think it set records for complaints over 110,000 complaints to the BBC uh, related to excessive coverage. Not all excessive coverage. I'm sure there were complaints, I believe, it, it, the opposite way around that said you shouldn't have made a special complaints form about the coverage of Prince Philip's uh, death. But it has to be said they rubbed a lot of people up the wrong way. Anyway, that's nothing to do with COVID. The, the way that it's related to the COVID situation is... Um, and, and I know especially that people who were very unhappy with how the vigil to Sarah Everard was handled. Uh, I don't know if anyone saw the footage of this, but there was footage of like a few hundred people gathering outside the palace gates, laying wreaths, paying a vigil, not socially distanced, didn't look like many of them wearing masks either. Now, do I have a problem with that per se? not very sensible but would i like them you know battered and and handcuffed by the police no but at the same time why weren't the met wading in and battering them because that was the justification given for manhandling and arresting the women at the sarah everard vigil and we know that they weren't being violent just just explain to me how a silent vigil in honor of a, a woman who was think most likely murdered by a police officer why that's there to be broken up and and people to be treated like garbage and yet potentially more people in a in a smaller area again you know the Sarah Everard vigil every video and 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 picture I've seen of that almost everyone's wearing masks you look at the vigil outside the palace gates hardly anyone's wearing masks you could argue there's a Venn diagram of the people who believe that masks are some kind of conspiracy and the people who love the royal family. I don't know. But 
what I'm saying, Mike, is, and I know, you know, I'm obviously converted. I don't know what you think, but um, the police in general, but I'm talking particularly the map. If anyone was under any illusions as to whose interests the map represent and defend, it was pretty obvious when I saw those pictures outside the palace gates and there was no news of the, the Met paying any attention to it, warning people to stay apart, warning people to disperse, no batterings, no arrests. So, you know, I'm sure anyone particularly who was interested in um, the Sarah Avra thing or whatever would be interested in the double standards there. Any comment? Uh, yeah, it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. You know, like you said, you don't want to see anyone fucking carted off and and battered in the streets or anything, frankly, fucking ridiculous like that. Um, it's difficult, look, I, it's I, difficult I, I, to defend, is it, isn't it? It, it is it is I mean I think that I think people I'm not sure I think there are two two kind of bits that you, you mentioned like with the with the complaints and things that the BBC and ITV etc had um, I just think I, I mean, uh, whether you think it's excessive or not, why, I just, I don't get people that are so fucking busy, they feel like they have to, they feel like they have to complain about trivial things. Like, oh, I, I they cancelled or they moved back an episode of my favourite soap. Did they? Do you know, uh, do you know what like a fucking, you know what I mean, a, a member of royalty died, whatever you think of them, except that you live in a country with a monarchy and, you know, one of them oh, died. So you day. had to wait two days to watch your fucking episode of your favourite TV do you know, program. Do you, know, do you know what, Mike? The, I'll, 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 I'll give you a really interesting take on this. So <clears throat> I agree and I disagree with you. So I think you make a very worthy point, which is, people if your night's viewing is ruined one time it like that it, it's not a big deal you know unfortunately we're still we're still a constitutional monarchy some of us who don't agree with the constitution monarchy we have to we have to suck it up uh, the majority of the population i don't think that there's a huge majority but there's definitely a majority that still support having a royal family so we have to tolerate them and we have to tolerate the uh, outpouring when one of them passes, particularly one who's close to the Queen. So that that's inevitable in that sense. I'll tell you something that's interesting though, is I know you say, oh, you sad cases just because your one evening's viewing is ruined or whatever. Do you know, I would normally say the same thing, but I remember back in 1997, was it when Princess Diana died? So 97, Princess Diana's killed. The Liverpool-Newcastle game, I believe, got postponed because of it. And I was fuming. <laughs> so do you know what? I do have a bit of empathy for them. You know, the, basically, I have, a, I have this situation with television. Um, and I'm not sure if you're similar, Mike. So my situation with television is, first of all, I, you know, the, the majority of the broadcast media, the, the, the news is so awful now. It's, it's almost, it's just, it's Britain today. It's like Russia today, but British. Um, so I don't like how it brainwashes people. But if we're talking just about the content of the TV, like the entertainment, let's say, um, what I look at it as is there are two major demographics who watch television and that is the people who have families to look after so they can't be going out and the only other demographic is the terminally lonely and I say this having been in that situation myself 
you know, there was a period when I was very young, a disaffected teenager, or whatever, where I used to watch hours and hours of TV every night. And it, it does, you know, it helps you cope with the loneliness. And you can understand that through the prism of, you know, uh, an old girl in her 70s who lives alone. The TV provides solace, it provides companionship. You feel almost like there are other people in the room. So I do get, even though, you know, now I'd like to think I have more of a life, as I'm sure you would, where you're getting out and trying to experience things. But there are some people, whether they're pinned down by a family or whether they're just very lonely, the TV is their world and their schedule is something they look forward to. It's so, okay. yeah. Okay, that's that's a good point, and if if I'm honest, I hadn't really considered it. So <laughs> I I hadn't I hadn't really yeah victory for you. Uh, I I hadn't really considered it. It is a good point. I do still think though. Um, is it worth writing a a shitty letter or? Um, I can I, I can understand and sympathise. But I still think like. So would your argument be if you don't agree with what they got on, switch the channel off, just just tune I, something else. I mean, in. you know, there's a day or two where something's overhyped and it consumes um, the media and broadcasting, etc. Then yes, it's annoying, and yes, it can it can disrupt your your schedule and for some people then fairly it will be their schedule that type of schedule will be more important to them um and i do yeah i do get it i understand how that would be the case for some people i just i just don't think it's it's worth what you i just don't think it's worth kicking off about really if it goes past that it was still happening now when everything was being fucking cancelled and then yeah do you know what fucking I'll, I'll I'll write a fucking letter for you. Did but, you know, Mike? Did on that subject? Did Did you know that the football matches, if football matches are sh- the football matches that are scheduled at the same time as the Duke's funeral, have been postponed? Did you know that? What? <laughs> a <fucking> joke. <laughs> right. Give me a give me a, give me a complaint goodbye. form. <laughs> right. Where's I'm looking this shirt now. I can't complain. Uh, see, Who I love that. To? See, that's classic comedy. That's absolutely classic comedy. We built up to that brilliant punchline. And that's probably a good time to round it off. Um, it's been an, another interesting discussion, Mike, on, on Plague Island. But, oh, by the way, sorry, one thing we didn't mention as well is, dig this crazy weather. Whoa, I mean, climate change. I mean, you know, climate change is going to doom us all. Yeah, great. Okay, we're fucked. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love snow, but... What the hell was, like this morning, the day we've recorded this, I wake up this morning, there's a dusting of snow on everything. Snow in the middle of April. Not only that, I go to work, It's obviously it's biting wind, as you can imagine, it's nearly zero, whatever. Um, by about lunchtime, I get a visitor to the office. I'm talking to him on the doorstep. I'm, I think I'm in a t-shirt. And I start to almost feel like I'm about to sweat. How is that possible that you can have snow in the morning and it's getting so warm, you're like, oh, a bit toasty by the afternoon? It's absolutely nuts. Welcome to our new improved fucked up climate. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, we used to, you know, people used to say, oh, look at that. Four seasons in a week. Uh, we're going to be looking at four seasons in a day soon. Jesus. Anyway, <laughs> on that note, Mike, have you got anything to add to, well, to sign off with? Not really. Just like to invite people to uh, to like our video. Uh, please do. If you enjoyed any part of anything that I've said or you just like my haircut, um, like the video. <laughs> uh, like the video. Um, subscribe. So if you if you if you've watched. More than more than one of these now. Why haven't you subscribed? If you plan on, if this is your first video, watch another one. If it, uh, subscribe, subscribe to that shit. Hit the little bell and all that. And you can 
find out when uh, we upload new content. It's all fucking good quality merch. Don't worry about that. Um, but no, comment as well. Interact with us. Interact with us. I think we say it every time. Yeah, that's what um, we're here for. And we're, we're busy. We're, we're busy. We're busy content providers. Normally, you'll get maybe two videos a week. We do one about the state of Plague Island, usually, in general. And then we have our extra time, which is football-related discussions and banter. So something for yeah. everyone. Something for everyone. But, you know, like, comment. If there's something else you'd like us to do, even as a... Even if it's a one-off kind of, can you cover this? Suggest it. Even if it's ridiculous, we'll consider it. Um, I'll probably be up for it, but spoil sport over here probably won't. But oh no, can't do it. But no, no, no. Seriously though, um, if you knew, you want to hear us talk you about which one of us usually censors the topics? No, we're not talking about that. No, it's nothing to do. All with right, you. all right. Can you can fucking calm yourself down? Calm Danny. yourself calm down. Right. Uh, but no, if there, if there is something that, you know, even COVID related, obviously, is, is what we're looking at. But if there's something outside the box, perhaps we can do a, a slightly different extra time um, version. If there's something you want us to, you know, we'll consider these things. Something you want us to talk about, something you think we've missed, let us know. Um, if you think that everything that comes out of Aaron's mouth is bollocks, please, um, please let us know. Um, I'll enjoy that, certainly. Um but yeah, do like, subscribe, tell your friends. Yeah, okay. And if your friends are attractive young <laughs> ladies, then... And uh, yeah, and as Mike said when he was picking his exhaust pipe up off the road, get your lips around this. <laughs> and we will grow you next week, people.